Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, could one of us please lead us in prayer? Maybe John? Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we want to thank you for this time. As we come before your presence to learn from your word, we pray, God, that you would speak to us, encourage us to follow your steps, oh God, help us to understand your plans in our lives. Also submit us all to your hands and ask for your grace to be with him to lead us in this uh, study and learning of God. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. All right. Uh, before we go ahead, let's just uh, do a quick review of what we did last week. Last week, we did something very important. We saw how we as believers, as we lead people to Christ, we must also nurture them nurture these new believers into disciples, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus' instructions was very clear to each one of us, right? He said, go and make disciples, and that's what we want to do. Uh, it's not about, you know, just winning souls. That's, that's important. But it's also about raising up these new believers into leaders. And again, they go out and, uh, you know, bring, make new believers and then disciples. So we looked at nurturing believers, firstly, by teaching the word of God, right? We, we emphasize on God's word, not a person, not, not people, not this ministry or that ministry, but teach new believers from the word of God, teach God's truth, teach about you know, Holy Spirit baptism and uh, you know, water baptism, the Lord's table. Uh, these are simple truths, yet they are powerful truths. One of the uh, you, know, you know, one of the things that we can do is give them one of a copy of who we are in Christ. And, uh, you know, there's this whole uh, series on the in Christ revelations where they, you know, when they read it, they understand, hey, this is who I am after I have become a believer. And so these are very important aspects. Secondly, we looked at training in spiritual disciplines. Now, as we teach the word, as we, uh, you know, look to disciple new believers, train them in spiritual disciplines, meaning personal time in prayer, personal reading of the word of God, godly living, uh, you know, repentance, holiness, and all the things that are attached to living a godly life. Now, here's the important part. If we are going to teach somebody to spiritual disciplines, uh, we need to be doing it first, right? That we know that saying, right? Uh, practice what you preach. Uh, and so we need to practice it in our own lives. And then when we share it with others, it's going to impact them as well. Right? Then we looked at uh, Christian fellowship, which is an integral part of for new believers. And some of the ways are getting them into fellowship is life groups, Bible study groups, uh, fellowship groups, youth groups, uh, whatever, uh, you know, whatever age or uh, criteria they're in. You can get them connected to uh, groups where they can have fellowship with one another. And after they've come to a certain level of maturity, we equip them to serve in the church, right? Uh, now, doesn't mean that once they become believers, they can't serve uh, in other areas. Yes, of course, they can serve in different areas. Uh, but then as they're maturing, you can give them m more responsibilities, uh, more ideas, more opportunities for them to serve. So, uh, so we also picked up a few examples on Jesus, the way he discipled people, the early church, how they went about raising disciples and how Apostle Paul in his ministry, um, he raised many, many disciples, many, many leaders. Uh, and they again went on to impact uh, the cities that they were in. So that was chapter 12 on nurturing new believers. Now, from chapter 13 onwards, uh, if you look at your notes, you will see only pointers. Now, the reason the pointers are there is because uh, we we can't put all the points into one chapter. So we've divided them on different tops, topics in different chapters. So we're going to just briefly look, look at uh, chapters 13 to 19. And uh, hopefully today we can cover up at least 13, 14, and 15. And then uh, next week... Uh, we can cover up the remaining. So next week should be your last class uh, uh, and we should be able to wrap up the sessions. Okay, so chapter 13. 
even as we you know go about ministering reaching out to people we will face practical challenges right so chapter 13 is overcoming those practical challenges what are some of them uh, as mentioned here threats persecution and abandonment now being a christian we all know that there will be threats there will be persecution there will be people who will abandon us friends may abandon us family may abandon us uh, yet we are to overcome those practical challenges we are still to help people overcome if we are going through that ourselves uh, we are to overcome those challenges right uh, you know persecution is something that is always going to be there right uh, it's not surprising when we look at the early church and we look at even after the first century church look at the second and the third century church they went through enormous persecution the times of nero uh, was just a, a horrible time for the christians uh, immense persecution uh, so we as believers are not to look at the persecution or people's threats and abandonment of, of people and say okay uh, i think i'm better off you know just being a quiet christian no no god has called us to overcome those practical challenges uh let me give you this example you know when we came to the city of mangalore uh, i began to talk to many pastors and i asked them what do we do for christmas i came here in the month of july uh, and i began to ask them what, what what do we do for christmas because in bangalore we do a lot of events and programs and they said we don't do anything for christmas we are not allowed we, as christians we're not allowed to do anything uh, uh in public uh you know in public places uh, we can't do carols and all of it and i thought to myself okay if we're not allowed to so we'll just do it in the church no uh, but somewhere you know we were praying as a church and as a family uh you know spending time in prayer and the lord just put it in my heart to you know not to li- not to go by what people say but listen to what he says what god is speaking to me and god very clearly told me go and ask the malls if you can do carol singing so what i did was i uh, i went to some of the pastors i said uh, we want to do this uh, do you think we can collaborate right so uh, we can go we can ask for uh, the malls if they can give us an opportunity all of them said no uh, and i was really surprised because uh, i asked them why they said no uh, i don't think that's going to work this is not bangalore and um, i was quite uh, you know feeling quite dejected uh, but i thought okay let me just do what god has called us to do and he's saying do this so we went to the malls uh, i went and met the managers um, and you know we i remember we prayed and said god grant us favor because you know we the city of mangalore is um, uh, earlier 2008 2009 they were known for you know its persecution and all of that uh, but anyways we prayed for grace we prayed for favor and we went and met this manager in about three good malls uh and uh, all three malls they said it's never happened in mangalore we were we are excited you can come you can do your carols we will uh, you know give you a place uh we will give you a book table we'll give you a table you can put your i, I told them about the books that we have it's free books uh which you can you know people if they interested they can take uh then we also they said we will give get the sound system get the place ready you do here for two days and the other mall we do it in two days and they everything just worked out right and uh, the, you know, on the days of the events there were a lot of people coming and watching but here's one thing that we did right even though we got the opportunity we took permission from the mall a written letter saying that you know we are doing christian songs christmas is a christian uh you know a, a, a christian program and it's a christian event and carols is something which is related to jesus and christianity uh, so we took a written letter from the manager got it signed everything but on the day uh it was quite intimidating because you know uh we were just about what we didn't have a full band we were just one guitar with a few singers but there were like a lot of people uh, you know coming to see what is this happening here uh, uh it was quite overwhelming but here's what happened it uh, you know the, that whole thing went on 
everything went on. People came, took books. People also started coming to church after that. But after that, the entire city, all, all the pastors, uh, you know, quite a few pastors, they began to call me. They said, how did you get permission to do this? Who gave you the permission? How, how were you able to do this? Uh, they began to call. And I said, I went and asked them. As simple as that. Right. I went and asked the manager. He said, okay. He provided for everything. He asked me, you know, what do you need? I said, these are the equipments. These are the mics. Cables. And we did it. And consistently, we kept doing it every year. Same. Every year. Books are going out. Uh, the, uh, all our publications are kept on the table. And there was, I'm not saying that everything was, you know, very smooth. There were times when people came and asked, well, why are you all singing? And they tried, they stopped me also. Uh, you know, we overcome those practical challenges, right? So in ministry, all of us are, you know, probably already in ministry or looking forward to ministry. Do not be afraid of what people say. Don't be afraid of the, you know, the, of persecutions and things that are happening. God is able, if God is telling you to do something, go in faith, right? Don't be afraid. Overcome those practical things, right? And there are many other obstacles to going to church again, uh, overcoming uh, th those practical challenges. Some students may say, hey, Monday to Saturday, I'm, uh, you know, I'm wake up early, Sunday is difficult, families find it difficult. So we help them to overcome these challenges. Uh, cultural and religious practices. Now, especially if somebody's come from another faith and they become a believer, they may not understand uh, what the Lord's Supper is, or they may not understand what why are people raising their hands and praying uh, and worshiping and uh, what's all this about. Uh, so we need to help them practically to uh, help them understand. They may have a lot of questions, a lot of thoughts, uh, uh, you know, questions in their head. Why is it happening like this? Uh, so uh, it's it's good not to condemn them. We should not condemn them. Oh, you don't know this? No. So you just be available for them and help them, right? Uh, so chapter 13 is just those basic points. I want to get to chapter 14, which is strategies that you and I can use in evangelism. Now we have two settings. We have an urban setting, we have a rural setting. So many of us may be in urban cities, many of us may be in rural towns or villages, uh, smaller or bigger villages. Now, how can we have, you know, create strategies for evangelism, right? Uh, now, very important point is to remember to have wholesome methods of evangelism, which means wholesome method to bring the gospel to people. Right Now, what is wholesome methods? Spirit-led methods, legal and ethical methods, right? Because we don't want to be people who will, you know, who try to deceive others and say, hey, why don't you come here? It's something that you may enjoy. We don't want to do that. So if you see all our promotions, all our uh, banners and our invites, every invite will have an APC logo and written all people's church. Right? So even if we're inviting people, they know that it, this is a Christian organization. Right. Uh, so we are not deceiving anyone. We are not saying, OK, uh, you know, it's just some regular concert or a regular uh, time of uh, a regular youth meeting. No, they know that this is a Christian event. Right. Now, let me share some things that have happened. Uh, this young man in our church, he once invited a friend. We were having a I think it was a potluck uh, uh, because so uh, it was during Christmas time, and so he invited this friend, uh, and he told his friend, "Right, come, we're all going to go to this place, and we'll have a nice dinner." Right, and so he brought him to church. Of course, there was a dinner in the church and all of that. Uh, but this boy, I, I met him, and he was really offended. Right, uh, he said, uh, "You know, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm really disgusted with what is happening here." Uh, and I was quite taken aback. I said, what happened? He said, no, my friend, he told me that we're going out for dinner, but he didn't tell me we're going to a church. Now, what happened was 
you know, uh, it's a Christian event and he's a Muslim by faith. And here people had bought all kinds of non-vegetarian items, including pork. And he was really offended, really, really offended. He said, I can't even stay here. I said, you're free to go. I'm sorry that, you know, you were uh, not informed that it was a Christian event. And uh, uh, so I remember telling this young man in church, I said, see, it's good that you invited, you, you want to invite people, but do not deceive people. Do not try to, you know, use unwholesome methods. Uh, and I know that he's not going to come back to church, at least for now. Uh, and I told him, I told this young man, don't force this boy to come to church. You can minister to him, uh, you know, because it started off wrong. And so now he has a wrong impression. They, they are trying to deceive. They are trying to, you know, uh, just pull people into their fold and all of these things. So very important. As leaders, use wholesome methods, right? Uh, we become all things to all people. We step into their world. We understand them, right? Uh, this uh, this young man who was in church, he, he said, uh, so what if folk is there? It's all right, no. Anyways, but I understood the hurt. Uh, we hurt his sentiments, right? It's, uh, it's not, it may be something very silly for us, but for him, it was something very big. So we need to understand, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says the whole thing about food sacrifice to idols. And he says, if this person is weak and if he feels that you know, food offered to idols is something that's going to affect him, don't eat it, right? And so Paul is writing and he's saying, to those who are weak, become weak. To those who are uh, uh, strong, be strong. To the Jews, be a Jew. To the Gentile, be a Gentile. Right, so we must be able to relate and identify with people. Now, this is not only during evangelism, but also in your ministries, in your church, in your uh, you know life groups or small churches, whole house churches, Bible study groups. Relate to people. Right, uh, uh, do not come to an immediate position of judging people. Right? Uh, because we will lose them. Right? Relate to them. And as you relate to them, also remember that it's obedient, uh, you know, it's always good to be obedient to Christ. I'll share this as another example that happened just recently, about two weeks back. There's this young boy in our church, serving always very faithfully. Uh, but his mother, his parents stay in a different country in Kuwait, and so they they messaged and they called me and they said, you know, this boy likes a Hindu girl. Please do something about it. Right? Uh, and the Hindu girl wants to become a Christian. Uh, so she's come about a couple of times. I didn't remember this girl, but she's come a couple of times. And so, so please, please speak to him. So I remember speaking, I, I spoke to him and I said, um, you know, I didn't say, no, you should not get married. It'll be a whole thing wrong. Your life will be, you know, your life will go to waste. Another. So we must understand the person. He's 22, he's 23 years old, right? Boys, you know, it's a natural tendency. Boys will like girls, right? And, and so he likes this girl. Now, we just need to guide him, but not judge him. Right? The wrong thing to do in this situation is to judge him. How can you find a girl who is from a different faith? No. Right? Uh, he didn't look at it. He just likes the girl as a person that she is. Right? Uh, uh, so we need to understand people, relate to people, understand them. You've got the young people, you've got the just married couples, you've got children, you've got uh, you know, couples with small kids. If, if the couples come late to church, I don't go shouting at them saying, hey, 10.30 is church. Why are you coming 10.45? No, you, we need to understand. No, yeah, They have a small child. That's going to be difficult. You got to get them ready, get them to come to church. So relate to people, whether they're believers, whether they're unbelievers, whether you're ministering to them uh, uh, for the first few times or you're just bringing in Christ into their lives. Relate to them. 
They may say something about their religion. Relate to it. Try to understand it. Right? We are not to go into a time, oh no, all gods are wrong, only my god is right. No, try to understand. Right? Uh, so for example, if somebody uh, you know says, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is what my religion believes. Oh, that's okay. Uh, can you tell me more? Relate to it. I remember having this conversation uh, yesterday uh, about, you know, in India, we're having uh, this whole thing of Dasara. Uh, it's a big, huge festival in our nation. Everyone celebrated. And uh, so I was asking this uh, man, young man, uh, what is Dasara? Now, I know what I know what is Dasara, what the whole context is. Uh, but I wanted to know from him, what does he understand? About I began to relate to him. So I began to ask him question after question after question. I knew that he was, you know, really getting, I was getting onto his nerves almost, but uh, but he was, you know, willing to answer. Uh, I asked him, what are the lights about? What, what is what is the whole thing about? What, what is your understanding? Why, why is it lights? Why is it called the festival of lights? Does that, you know, do you feel happy? Does, uh, is there a change inside you after the festival? interesting thing he said was there's no change inside me this is change outside you know things around us change then i said what about change inside you when are you going to change your heart our thoughts our minds and that went on to a whole new discussion so you know, what i'm trying to say is relate be culturally sensitive be culturally relevant now what works in one place may not work in another place. What works in India may not work in Africa. What works in you know, Africa may not work in the United States. So be culturally sensitive, be culturally relevant, right? Now we can't go to kids nowadays, you know, kids are 14, 15, even, even before that, you know, they already know how to use tabs and phones and all of that. You can't go to a kid and say, don't use my phone, don't use the phone, don't use media can't do that. I mean, they will use it, right? We need to be, uh, you know, culturally relevant. But we can use these tools to bring them to Christ, right? Um, so what works in one place may not work in a different, another place. Remember that, right? Now, if, if we are leaders or we are ministering to people, uh, if, if you've shared this to a person and you feel that, you can try it again. If it doesn't work, don't be dejected. Don't feel that, oh, I, you know, last time it worked. Why didn't it work this time? It, it may work sometimes. You've got to change the strategy. Now, for example, uh, when, we, when I came to Mangalore, uh, one of the things I noticed was nobody wants to work on Sunday uh, in the city of Mangalore. Nobody wants to work on Sunday. They want to take an off. Right? They will not work. You give them business, they'll say, no, thank you. Today is a rest day. So I was looking around on Sunday, the first few Sundays that I came. The whole place was empty. The roads are empty. There are no vehicles, hardly any vehicles. All the shops are closed. We have our church in a complex. We are the only people, only, you know, the only thing that is open in the entire complex of about maybe 150 shops. We are the only ones open there. So... I knew, okay, we need to change strategy. The way we minister to people, the way we do outreaches, people are not going to come on a uh, Saturday evening. If they come on a Saturday evening for a worship evening, they will not be there on Sunday morning. And so I realized, hey, we need to change this. So I moved worship evening on Friday evening so that you know Saturday they have a rest and then uh, Sunday they're at church. So there, there are different strategies and we'll have to, you know, keep adapting to those. Now, we seek not to intentionally offend people, but minister in such a way that we draw them to Christ. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm sure most of us want to do that. You know, we don't want to offend people. Uh, you know, different people may under have different understandings of the word of God. Right? Uh, remember this uh, young person pastor that I met recently, he was sharing with me and he was, he asked me, did you take the vaccine? I said, yes, I took the first shot. And he said, oh, you, do you know that if you take the vaccine, you will lose your salvation? 
I was surprised. I said, uh, I said, what are you talking about? He said, uh, no, the vaccine, if you've taken the vaccine, you've got the mark of the beast and uh, you've lost your salvation. Now, the first thing that came to my mind was open the book of revelations and just, you know, make him sit and make him understand things. But, but you know, we are not there to offend people. So, you know, just talk, talk in the right way. Be, be a minister in such a way that they, you know, they don't feel offended. Now, they may not have understood things. So we teach them. We, we bring out the truth of God's word and we try and relate to them. And I, and I told him, uh, you know, he's got a good church, about a hundred odd people. Now, all the hundred of them, hundred odd people, none of them have taken vaccine because of what he's teaching. And they all believe that it's the mark of the beast and, you know, these kind of things. So even during these times, do not offend people. We may know a lot of things. Act as if, you know, uh, uh, that you're just, you're, you're there, you're listening, you want to help them, you want to minister to them, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 to 33. Let's just read that, one of us. Was 1 Corinthians 10, 31, verses 31 through 33. Yes, one of us, please read that. Yes. Uh, anybody, John or anyone? First Corinthians ten thirty one to thirty three. Yeah. Pastor, is it okay? First Go Corinthians ahead. ten thirty one to thirty three. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Yeah, Amen. Thank you, Devya. So here Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He's telling them, now, some of them are Jews in the church. Some of them are Gentiles. So he's saying, he's telling the Jews, now, you are circumcised. And so am I. So that's good. Then he's saying to the Gentiles, you're not circumcised, but you have received Christ and all the blessings of Christ is in you and you have received salvation. The Holy Spirit is in you. You have received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So have I. So what is he trying to say? He's not telling the, the, the Gentiles, you know, go and get uh, 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 circumcised. Uh, in fact, he's telling, you know, to the Galatians, he says, what made you change your mind? Right? Uh, that you went from the salvation to circumcision, right? So here Paul is trying to bring the bring his attention, bring the attention to people that we are not to offend people in whichever standing they are in, right? Uh, if if there's somebody who's come from a different faith, or you're ministering to them, and they have these weird belief systems, and it may not, you know, make sense to us. The first thing we usually do is try to, you know, uh, resist and offend them. We should not. Jesus has not called us to offend people. But you speak the truth in love and then draw them to Christ. Right? We do ministry in a way that there is no opportunity to blame. Right? Second Corinthians chapter six, verse three to four. Let's read that. Second Corinthians chapter six, three to four. Go ahead, Divya. If you're there, you can read it. Um, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed, but in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distress, in strides, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor 
of righteousness on the right hand and on the left by honor and dishonor by evil report and good report as deceivers uh, and yet true as unknown and yet well known as dying and behold we live as chastened yet not killed as sorrowful yet not yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things amen such a wonderful verse that is paul is trying to tell the believers listen now if we were in paul's place i wouldn't have to give a i wouldn't have to justify my ministry right because he's done such a wonderful work right his from the time he uh, you know his conversion we see he started off on his first missionary journey he did powerful things uh, there's a there's a saying that apostle paul started off he did what all 12 of them uh, did together he did it alone uh, and so he didn't have to you know justify his ministry but what does he say we are doing our ministry in such a way that people do not point fingers at us uh in second corinthians again later on he says uh we uh, we are apostles and we are you know we are legal or we are you know okay to take the gifts to the receive the gifts that you have for us but we don't take it because we don't want people to blame right and and paul is saying here do not give an opportunity for people to blame you for the ministry that you're doing be right in every standard right uh one thing that i learned uh very important in ministry is have things on paper have things on file on document things that you're doing now we can say i trust this person and do things uh you know maybe do a uh, you know work together but trust is very often lost right uh, don't be surprised if people lose trust or you you lose trust on people it's very important to document things right uh, and so one of the things we did was when we uh, you know whenever we have events or programs we open up this excel sheet we put everything in on paper this is the amount we have raised up the funds we have raised this is the person who gave this much these are the things that we bought for the church these are the things that we uh, still have this is the itinerary of or uh, you know all the things within the church the number of chairs the number of tables uh, the sound system the cables the mics everything is on document right uh, our sunday offerings everything is on document everything is on paper so nobody can say okay actually we received this amount where is the other amount no no everything is being accountable for even as we choose leaders we are very careful right that we train up the leaders in the right way uh, uh you know teaching them of course we all will make mistakes but uh teaching our leaders to train to 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 minister to people in the right way and so god has commissioned us to preach so that when we preach uh we are not violating other people's time or property and whatever uh, you know they have but we are preaching so that they come to Christ it is very sad and there are plenty of people and plenty of stories that i can share where leaders and pastors have violated their church members and even you know just going to the point of asking them to sell their house sell their car uh there's this one preacher uh in our city uh and it's a very sad thing this member this young couple they came to church and then they shared this whole story how this pastor you know would say some prophetic words and uh eventually he told the, these two that if you bless the church with a car god is going to bless you with double the portion so this pastor forced the church members this this young couple to buy a car for the church i i really don't know what the car was for but uh and they came and told me this and they are paying the loan every month they are paying the installments for the car and the pastor is using the car and it was just so hurtful they are a young couple you know this banking employees it was very hurtful and they were very hurt with the whole thing 
Uh, and so when we do ministry, let us do it in clear conscience. Let us do it uh, in a way that nobody will blame us for what we are doing. So even as we do this, uh, strategies, identify different age groups. What you do while you're ministering to a 60-year-old, you can't do that for a 16-year-old, right? There are different age groups, different criterias, so you minister accordingly. There are different areas in the city uh, which where there's a need in the city, so you minister accordingly. Different spheres uh, of activities or spheres of influence that you want to minister to, uh, uh, then you have different tools that we can leverage, uh, meaning there's YouTube, there's online, uh, you know, uh, videos, podcasts, uh, then there's a lot of things that we can share <clears throat> to minister and, uh, you know, build people and reach out to people. So even in this day and age, I want to encourage during this time where people are, where persecution towards Christianity is especially increasing, let us not become cold. Let us hold on. God has called us to preach. Remember this one time, uh, just the last week, um, you know, usually I go out on outreaches, but the last over this whole, you know, Karnataka was doing a survey on the churches and this whole thing. Uh, for a couple of days, we didn't go out on outreach and uh, we were praying uh, during our family prayer. The Lord very clearly told, you know, ministered to me and said, this verse came very, very powerfully to me. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We were praying and that just, that just hit me so hard. And I thought, hey, no matter what persecution comes, no matter what people do, or whether it's, you know, whatever it is against Christianity, God is building his church. It is not us. So if God is building his church, his promise is the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I said, okay, let's go out. So I went out, began to do some outreach, began to reach out to people, giving out tracts, doing everything. Was there uh, a hindrance before that? Yes. I just thought, let, let this whole situation stop. But I realized that, hey, if God is building his church, of course we'd be wise. I, don't, I didn't you know, just go to random places. I went to malls, just looking at the right people, you know, sharing the gospel with them. But what I'm trying to say is, don't let fear, no matter who, you don't have to be a pastor, you can just be a believer within the church. Do not let fear overcome you during these times. I love what uh, the book of Acts writes. They went about doing wonderful miracles and uh, there were threats on the disciples. And there it, they say that they prayed saying, God, give us boldness that we may face those threats. So God has called us, you know, he's given us that authority. And, and so don't be afraid. Even as we use strategies, especially in uh, rural areas, we see persecution maybe in different nations as well, we are seeing this. And it's going to become a global problem. A global persecution is going to rise. It's going to be there. But that does not stop the work that God has promised, that he's building his church. So let us continue to reach out in every way possible, bringing the gospel to uh, people. So for children, uh, some of the things that we do at APC is we have something called as Catalyst, where we go to schools and, uh, you know, uh, once a week we share um, the Word of God. We teach the Word of God. And for colleges, it's called Campus Elevate. Uh, uh, you know, college students, we go and we share the Word for a one-hour one hour session. And, and then for youth, you have concerts, youth concerts, youth events. Uh, coffee talks, so many other things. Depending on your uh, setting, you can, you know, probably do those events. Then for young adults, you got uh, professional groups, you got working professional teams, uh, workplace groups. Uh, then for married families, counseling groups, seminars, women's conference, men's conference. So accordingly, you can, you know, uh, create events and do them. Now, you may say, okay, but I'm just a leader in the church or I'm just a believer in the church. How can I plan? 
go to your pastor, go to your leaders, tell them, oh, pastor, can we try this? Right? Take the step. Right? Uh, I'm sure your pastor is going to be happy. Your pastor will not say, no, how can you? No. He'll be happy that the church members are trying to do something to reach out to people. So if you have a plan, you have an idea, sit with your leaders, discuss, plan it out, right? See what's going to work, see the pros and cons, um, and how you're going to uh, do the whole, you know, reaching out, how, how are you going to implement the strategy, plan, discuss, work it out. Uh, you never know that God can give you an opportunity itself to minister to many people. So if you're already a leader, that's great. You can implement all of this. But if you're just a, a believer in the church, or you can go ahead and talk to your leaders, talk to your pastors and uh, get involved in the church, right? Get involved in reaching out uh, to people. Uh, you know, one of the sad things I would say is that a lot of times, Know, believers in the church, we become people who just come on Sundays and leave uh, and then come every Sunday. That's it. We don't want to do that. We want to be people who will build this lifestyle of evangelism wherever we are, uh, that we'll be able to share, minister, disciple people. Right? Uh, so we will stop here, uh, chapter 14. Um, I think from chapter 15 onwards, we just look at those points. Next week will be our last class, and then I will put up our final assessment. You can go through it. It's, it's going to be simple questions. Go through it uh, and fill it, write the answers. It's an open book uh, question, so you can look at your notes and all of that. Uh, and then it's basically to know how, how much you have understood from this subject. So, right. Any questions, any thoughts before we close? Any questions, any thoughts? Has it been helpful? Has it been something that you have, uh, you know, learned? Uh, yes, Pastor. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, is there anything like you, you have any questions? People, you know, uh, when we go and reach out to people, sometimes they have a lot of questions. Uh, and so, right, we looked at all of those uh, pointers in chapter three, chapter four. Uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot of things, but we can go about doing what God's called us to do. So, right. Any thoughts, any questions? Right, I'm guessing that everywhere the churches have begun right now. Um, so I think things are looking to be get back to normalcy. So I encourage you to, again, maybe you can keep targets reaching out to you know, people, you can just say, okay, one person a week. I want to at least share the gospel to one person a week. And you can start small. And uh, the more you do it, the more we will get uh, familiar with it. We'll get more confident. And the more we do it, you know, the Holy Spirit will empower. He will strengthen us. He will guide us. All right? Okay. Uh, so if there's no questions, let's just uh, uh, close in prayer. Oh, okay, we are sharing something. Our church is doing an evangelism course based on Lifeway Ministries. Okay, uh, we haven't really heard of Lifeway Ministries. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, it'll be great to great learning as well. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Right. Uh, Nicholson, so just out of curiosity, were these ministry ideas birthed by members or the pastoral team? Uh, <laughs> Few of the ideas were birthed by uh, uh, the church members. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think the coffee talk was something that was birthed by some, uh, some of our young adults. Uh, uh, but when I joined APC, the coffee talk was already happening. Uh, but from what I've heard, it was the idea of some of our church members, young, young our youth, uh, who said, let's meet in a coffee shop, uh, make it more, you know. Uh, uh, like a relaxed atmosphere, and so they were able to invite. So that was done by our church members. Uh, then there was also uh, one of the openings in Catalyst uh, College, uh, sorry, it was a school, uh, where one of our church members, uh, their father was the principal of the school. And so uh, through him, we got an opportunity to get into uh, his school and you know do Catalyst. So uh, of course, they gave us the idea and then 
uh, the team, the pastoral team, we began to plan out on how, uh, you know, to work it out, right? So for example, they said, some of our youth came and said, we want to do coffee talks in coffee day. So the idea was given. And then as a pastoral team, we decided, we discussed, talked about it, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, thought about how we could implement it the right way. And then even for the, uh, you know, the teaching in the schools, the Catalyst program, uh, this young man came and said, you can, you're free to have, you know, some of the team members come and teach one hour session uh, for the students from fifth standard to 10th standard. So he gave us the opportunity, but then we had to plan it out, right? Uh, what to teach, come up with the curriculum, uh, all those things. So it was, it was a combined effort. Yeah, Nicholson. Yeah. Submitted my midterm assessment. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, we. Uh, if you've submitted it, uh, Isaac, uh, we will. I would have received it, so I will take a look at it and I will answer. You know, we, the marks will also show up on the marks column, so you can look at that as well. Right. All right. Any other question? Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron are the ones who. Okay. Okay. Ray Comfort is a wonderful uh, evangelist. It's just so powerful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. Any other thoughts? Shall we close in prayer? So as I mentioned, last uh, next week will be the last class. We'll wrap up on all the topics, and uh, then we can uh, get ready for our final term exam as well. All right. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, God. Lord, we thank you for your word that so powerful, that empowers, that teaches, that ministers. Lord, we pray that we as your children, God, will develop this attitude of reaching out, of ministering to people, oh God, that you have called us to be disciples, that we will be disciples, will be worthy of the call that you have given us, oh God. Grant us a greater measure of your anointing and your grace, your power, in us, O oh God. And Lord, we have this great assurance that if you are for us, who can be against us? We thank you, God. We pray, Lord, for each and every student, even as they're going through all the different courses of this semester, that your Holy Spirit will remind, convict, strengthen, and touch each of our lives, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that you'll use each one of us for your glory, and we will be channels of your blessing. For your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I will catch you next week. God bless. God bless.